Now let's start with just another sphere primitive. Go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, hold down control shift. We talked about all the clips. Now there's still some options in here we're going to talk about, but we're going to talk about some of these other brushes first. Let's move our way down. Crease curve we'll get to when we get into polished by feature stuff, but if you just use this one, basically essentially what it does, you hold down control shift and you just slice through and it will make a slice on your object and it'll crease it. So eventually when we get to like polished by features, that'll leave a nice crease on your object. So that's how that works. We'll get more into depth on that later. Hold down control shift. We've already talked about visibility. So slicing, we haven't talked about slice yet. This will come in handy when we, again, when we start getting into hard surface stuff, when you talk about controlling curves, but essentially let's start with slice curve. And just like the other curve modifiers, you drag out a curve. Uh, you can use your space bar to move it around. You can double tap to make a sharp curve. You can tap once to make a Bezier curve. And when you let go, right where that curve line was is where it's going to slice through your geometry. So if we just make this simpler, we can just slice right through. And if we control shift tap, you're gonna see we have a poly group on one side, a poly group on the other. And again, this comes in handy for a lot of different reasons. And you can continue slicing. So you can just slice through here. And then every time you slice, it makes this a new poly group. So let's say we wanted to slice through this object and then we want to maybe fill the holes in this and make it two separate pieces. What I'm gonna do is go over here to Subtool. We're gonna go down here, we're gonna to go to Split, Group Split, always okay. We're gonna Alt tap this top one, go into Solo Mode. I'm gonna go into Geometry, Modify Topology. We're gonna to go down here to where it says Close Holes. And that's gonna close those holes. Go out of Solo Mode, Alt tap this one, go to Close Holes. And now I have two separate objects that are both closed and we basically just slice that up. Now, that function functionality right there where we slice and close the holes, that can actually be completed with one object or one modifier. If you hold down control shift, you're gonna see we can slice and then we also have trim here. So if we choose trim curve and we trim through our object here, you're gonna see it's going to slice and then close holes for me. So it'll just do that really quickly. We can just trim curve all over this object and it's gonna slice and then close the holes. Now one caveat to this is if we go over here to say slice curve and we do a curve like this and we slice through, it's same thing, you know, if we try to do, you know, select rectangle, I'm gonna grab this one, I'm gonna go geometry, modify, topology, delete, hidden, and then I run a close holes, that close holes isn't gonna to be too smart. It's gonna to wanna to just close the holes, but it's just gonna, it's gonna do a pretty bad job. Same thing with trim, because again, all trim is doing when you do a trim curve, it's gonna slice through and then it's gonna close holes, so you're not gonna get a great result. And then in this instance, what I would usually do is a clip curve instead, because clip curve is a little bit smarter. However, it's not gonna leave uh, polygroups behind and it's not gonna give you a clean cut. You can get polygroups. If you hold down Control Shift, tap the space bar, you're gonna see there's a polygroup option. So hold down Control Shift, and then you can double click twice. And now when you clip, it'll go ahead and give you a polygroup. The edges aren't very clean, but that's just kind of the limitation. It's kind of resolution dependent, and it's not gonna slice. But speaking of slice, uh, we can go to slice circle here, and then you can just slice circles on your object. Now, this will go through your object. If you go into solo mode, it's gonna slice all the way through. Um, if you don't want that to happen, you can isolate this first by control shift clicking it and temporarily hiding what's behind there, and then you can slice through and then bring it, control shift tap to bring everything back, and then it won't slice through. And the other thing with slice and trim is it doesn't go across an axis. So let's go ahead and go out of edit mode, control N to clear my canvas, grab a sphere, drag it out, edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, hit X to go across X symmetry. And you'll see if you slice, it's only gonna slice one side even though I had X symmetry on. In this case, what you're gonna have to do is do a quick deformation mirror, and then also geometry modified topology mirror and weld. So in this case, I'm gonna have to mirror across the X and then mirror and weld to get it on both sides. And again, in my custom menu here, we have mirror, mirror and weld right next to each other. Also, it went all the way through my object because I didn't hide it first. So if I want to avoid that, again, hold down control shift. And here's another thing. So hold down control shift and you see it's gonna be a slice circle. If you temporarily want to do visibility, hold down control shift, start dragging out, tap control, that'll switch to a visibility cube or a visibility rectangle. Hold down alt, we can get rid of this backside. We can go to the front here, we can hold down control shift and we still have select our slice circle selected. So we can hold down control shift, bring everything back, do a quick mirror, mirror and weld, and now we just have the front part here. Hold down control shift. And again, all of these different strokes like a trim circle, trim curve, trim lasso, it's just basically changing those stroke options, same with rectangle. And then again, if you wanna make the circle center and square, you can make it zero to one, and then you can just slice through here. 
Now another thing you can do with slicing, which is kind of neat, you can hold down Control Shift and let's go ahead and do. Doesn't whenever we turn on um, square, it doesn't seem to want to uh, let me use my spacebar to move it. It's kind of weird. Uh, but what we can do is we can just basically we'll slice through here and then underneath your stroke options you have a modifier, you have replay last relative and replay last. If you do replay last relative with the shift one, you can hold down shift and one where your cursor is and it'll just re-slice wherever your cursor is. So that's kind of a cool thing you can use. And again, it's not going to be across an axis, so you'll have to do a mirror and weld if you want it to uh, be across an axis and make sure you don't have anything hidden. So just keep that in mind. Oh, one addendum I should probably make we go over to Sphere 3D here, we go to Edit Mode, Make Poly Mesh 3D, and remember when we were clipping, and we were clipping like, I'm going to move all this stuff up, and it leaves that ring. Well, that's an instance where you'd probably want to use Trim, and that'll go through Slice, Close Holes, and now you won't get that ring. Now, the one place that kind of falls apart is when you want to trim dynamic a shape like this, and it kind of leaves you that kind of result. Clip won't, but it's not very precise. Slice will, but when you go to Geometry Modified Topology Delete Hidden and then Geometry Modified Topology Close Holes, it's still going to give you that same result. So one thing you can do is watch the video on Dynamesh Groups and you can use slicing with Dynamesh Groups to get that stair step effect. Another thing you can do, always remember, go to Append, say for instance a Cube 3D, select this one, and we can just put a cube here, make sure it's wide enough. Control drag a copy, control drag a copy. We can make this subtractive. We'll make this one a Dynamesh. So then when I merge these down and I control drag, it'll go ahead and just cut through. Now, if we undo that, I'm going to hold down control shift. I'm going to isolate this one. I'm going to split this off, say split hidden. I'm going to move this down below. Here's a preview, sneak preview. Uh, we're not there yet, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to make this subtractive and then I'm going to turn on Live Boolean. And if I turn off Polyframe here, you're going to see we're going to get a preview of what this would look like when it's sliced through my mesh. If you turn on Polyframe, you're going to see this is what's happening. We're just basically moving this thing around and it's cutting through my mesh. And we can move this and it's live. So we're going to get to this stuff later. But I wanted to mention that's another option for you. And if you want to go ahead and apply this, you can say, okay, this is a preview for my Boolean operation. So I can just Dynamesh this and then merge it down. And that's the result I'll get. Or again, we're skipping ahead, but we'll go into Boolean here. Uh, if we were using dynamic subdivisions, we could turn this on. But since we're not, I'm just going to say make Boolean mesh. And that's going to spit out a U mesh right here. And then that's the result. And these are just polygroups left over from the stairs we cut in and then the sphere that we Booleaned. And there is one more method you can use. So what I said technically with the curve slice isn't really correct. There is a way around that. This was a technique that Chi Vang showed off at uh, one of the Zebra summits a few years ago. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a sphere drawn out. We're going to make Poly Mesh 3D. We're going to go to the side here. We're going to hold that Control Shift, and we're going to slice through here. Now Control Shift, click the side you like, and then we're going to go ahead down here to Geometry. We're going to delete hidden, and then while you're uh, Geometry Modified Topology, delete hidden. And then while we're in here, go ahead and use Close Holes. Now again, closing those holes kind of made that gross mesh here. So what we're going to do is hold down and uh, hit W, control tap this polygroup to mask it. Hold down Alt and then reset orientation so we can hold down control and then drag this out. By holding down control we're essentially giving this its own edge ring. And why we're doing that is so we can take all of these edges over here and pull them straight across and then when we mirror and weld this we'll have a nice slice through geometry that matches that profile. However, it would be nice to have all of these pieces of geometry have their own polygroup for selection purposes later. So what we're going to do is hold down Control Shift, isolate this polygroup, Control Shift X to expand, Control W, or I'm sorry, Control Drag to unmask, Control W to make that all one polygroup, Control Shift to bring everything else back, and just in case, Control Drag again, make sure everything's unmasked. Then we're going to go down here, let's go ahead and turn off our floor. Let's go to Modify Topology again, Mirror and Weld across the X axis, and now you're going to see that we were able to slice, move everything across, mirror and weld, and now we have a perfect edge that goes across every single piece of geometry here. Now, if mirroring and weld didn't work first, you can always go down here to deformation mirror across the X first, if you went positive to negative, and then do a mirror and weld, and it should look like this.